Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Few cargo planes have served as long and efficiently as the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. First introduced in the mid-1950s, the C-130 can utilize virtually any runway surface. Carrying up to 42,000 pounds worth of troops, cargo, and equipment to the front lines and beyond. Here you can see high explosive incendiary rounds being loaded onto the Hercules' most lethal variant, the AC-130 gunship. This heavily armed ground attack version was introduced in the mid-1960s and is armed with a versatile mix of firepower from rotary cannons to Vulcan guns built to dominate any target on the ground. These aircraft also boast improved navigation and mission systems to help them provide support to troops on the ground. All right, I'll go out, cut two. The incendiary rounds shown here are for one of the aircraft's side-mounted cannons. Gas is ready. Sizzix firms. Got on it. two. Got two, on two. This type of ammunition uses highly explosive charges to destroy their targets more thoroughly, or even cause them to catch fire. Clearly, being able to cause this sort of damage behind enemy lines could prove a huge boon for Allied troops. This is why AC-130 crews take this time to practice as often as possible. AC-130 crews are vital to the success of many missions. Therefore, drills and exercises are often performed under strict conditions and timelines. This requires lengthy pre-flight coordination in the command room. Check in two minutes later at 1502, and then it's going to be single ship ground ops from there. This is especially true of any flight that is going to use live ordnance for training purposes. The AC-130 has two pilots and two combat systems officers at any given time. Weapons and munitions are carefully and deliberately stored aboard the aircraft in order to maximize safety without sacrificing ability. In some models, there is both a 40 mm cannon and a 105 mm cannon in the same aircraft. Depending on the situation, these will be manned by up to three special mission airmen. Gunnery exercises are not just about offense, but also defense. At 97 feet long, and with a wingspan of 32 feet, there's no denying that the AC-130 makes a very large target. For this reason, most combat versions carry a BAE Systems ANALE 45 countermeasure system 
These systems can release hot burning flares at a moment's notice, disrupting infrared weapons such as heat-seeking missiles and rockets. The AC-130 is far from the only variant out there. Over the years, the Hercules has been repurposed for various mission types. Thanks to its older and comparatively simplistic design, the C-130 is the perfect candidate for refits and renovations. In fact, it's this versatility that has kept the plane in service for over 60 years. The EC-130J variant, for instance, is known as the Commando Solo version. Recently retired, it had the unique mission of conducting airborne information operations via radio and television broadcasts. The goal is to provide psychological boost to friendly troops and their allies. Reach out to potential dissidents, or even, at times, frighten the enemy. Over the years, this particular variant has been used in Operation Urgent Fury, where it helped end the Noriega regime in Panama. It later served as the voice of the Gulf during the Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Another important Hercules variant is the LC-130. Which is operated by both the United States Air Force and the Air National Guard. This variant is unique because it is equipped with special skis that allow it to land and take off from Arctic and Antarctic locations. Facilitating this type of landing takes a lot of coordination with ground crews using snowmobiles to survey and prep the area. Here, an LC-130 crew is practicing landing and taking off from a manufactured runway in Scotia, New York. It's heavy-duty, retractable skis allow the aircraft to manage the snow and ice quite well, even when the surfaces are hastily prepared or hardly prepared at all. So far, around seven of these unique LC-130 variants have been produced. In the past few decades, they've been used extensively to bring food and equipment to Arctic or Antarctic research outposts. In the mid-60s, Lockheed Martin introduced the KC-130 variant. This eventually grew into a whole family of extended-range tanker aircraft. The KC-130J, which was introduced in 2004, is the latest iteration of this tanker design. Its job is to provide refueling support for the United States Marine Corps aircraft. The KC-130 can do so for planes and helicopters within a 500 nautical mile radius.
thanks to heavy modifications. It can carry up to 60,000 pounds of fuel at one time. Allocating this for its own use, as well as for vehicles on a mission. In fact, the design is so effective that the tanker can transfer up to 300 gallons per minute to two aircraft simultaneously. Another benefit to the KC-130J is the plane's ability to take off and land from austere locations. This allows it to land quickly and provide refueling services to ground troops, vehicles, and equipment. Last but not least, the aircraft boasts a hotel mode in which it can feather its propellers to generate electric power for its generators. Large Gatling guns are not just used on aircraft, they are also used on naval ships for much different reason. Close proximity threats are those that are near enough to the ship to pose an immediate danger. They range from fast attack boats and unmanned vehicles to aerial threats like warplanes and drones. For naval vessels, aerial attacks pose the greatest threat. This has proven true since the invention of the aircraft, but is even more critical thanks to powerful new anti-ship missiles and other aerial weapons. For this reason, many ships carry advanced aerial defense systems, including radar, missiles, and automated guns. One of the most critical of these is the Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS. This radar-guided Gatling gun system is capable of firing 20 mm rounds at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. This creates a dense wall of fire capable of disabling and destroying a wide range of threats. Codenamed Phalanx, the CIWS is fully automated, allowing it to provide rapid target detection and engagement. With its one mile range, it is often capable of detecting and destroying a target before a human operator would have been able to identify the threat. Most importantly, it can be used against multiple targets, including aircraft, missiles, and drones. From the skies to the seas, America's obsession with overwhelming firepower takes many forms. And few are as iconic as the AC-130 gunship and the Navy's Gatling-style cannons. Striking from above with precision and defending the seas with relentless fire, they prove that even in modern warfare, overwhelming firepower remains the most reliable form of protection. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.